much for being here. What a real uh, treat, a pleasure to have you. Admiral Howard, let me begin with you. Just tell us what the military has meant to you. Oh my gosh. You know, I think about serving with sailors and Marines and some of the phenomenal missions we were involved with. And there are a group of individuals that perform miracles every day at sea. And uh, that's a privilege to lead people like that. Given your really incredible, distinguished career, you must realize that you're a role model to girls and, and women, uh, girls like Isabel and, and others who may want a career in the military. What advice do you have for them? I think anyone should pick what they want to do and pick a career that they love. If you have passion about what you're going to do, you won't feel like you're working. All right, General Lodi, General Barrett, two sisters who become generals. How in the world, General Barrett, does that happen? It happens because you have a passion for what you do and you pursue it um, with uh, great determination and, and you get promoted through a system that actually promotes everyone equally. So I think this is a credit to Paul and I working hard at this and really being committed to it. General Lodi, did you always know you wanted to be in the military? Did you ever think that you would be a general and did you think your sister would be as well? So, yes, always wanted to be in the military um, from a very young age. No, did not ever imagine being at this point in my career. Um, but I, I don't think anyone was ever surprised the day that, um, that Maria was promoted to general. Are you guys competitive? I have two stars, you have one star. Who's going to get more stars? <laughs> no, no. Well, she is sitting on the wrong side of me by arm. <laughs> 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 it, it is, um, Gen General Baird, I, I'd like to ask you, you are with the Cyber Command. Um, what about the partnership with Silicon Valley? Is it, a, is it a good one that the military has with Silicon Valley? Do we rely on them? Are they uh, a, a good partner? I, I think Silicon Valley and industry in general, and I'd also throw in academia, are absolutely critical to what we do. I, I think cyber is definitely a team sport. Um, we cannot do it without the partnership. The amount of technology changes that take place, uh, it is absolutely essential that we partner with them. How much, uh, we talk about it a lot, obviously cyber threats. How concerned should we be? Uh, I would be very concerned. If somebody came and punched you in the nose, Scott, you would want to take a swing back at them. I think we need to be prepared to have options uh, to defend ourselves in this space. General Lodi, you maybe didn't always see this as a, as a career path. You wanted to be a dietitian? So I did study to be a dietitian in college. Um, when I commissioned, I commissioned as a medical service corps officer, as a uh, field medical assistant, uh, as a basic uh, AMED officer. Uh, my thought was that I would do 10 years um, as a field medical officer, as a platoon leader, company commander, in troop assignments, but then at the 10-year mark, transition into a more clinical field um, within the Army Medical Department so that I could prepare myself for transition afterwards. Uh, my first two assignments were in divisions, were in combat divisions, and that really gave me uh, a feel for what my passion was and what I loved doing. General uh, Van Ovos, the Air Force. Uh, it's so interesting, you actually commanded the presidential air wing uh, when I read that, I was, I was blown away at how unbelievable that must be, the responsibility that comes with that. Can you talk to us about that? Sure. It was a great honor to command the men and women of the 89th Airlift Wing. We not only fly the president, but we fly the vice president, secretary of state, all our cabinet officials and congressmen around the world. And it, it's quite a responsibility because it's not just an airlift mission. These aircraft are flying command posts. They're command and control facilities that we keep all the government officials connected at all times to ensure they can do the business of America every day. And the men and women of Air Mobility Command who do not only this mission, but the mission of airlift and air refueling and air medical evacuation around the world, uh, they take great pride in what they do, and I'm, I'm very proud of that team. You actually flew Air Force too. I did. I flew the vice president. I don't want to leave one of the headlines out of, yeah. out of this story. Yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, 757 uh, and flying uh, again. The vice president and secretary of state. Uh, what an honor uh, to bring them to places for diplomacy. We bring diplomacy forward using those beautiful blue and white aircraft. 
Mm. What's the future of the Air Force going to look like in a, in a world where we're talking about drones in all sorts of different industries? Yeah, I tell you, uh, your Air Force is becoming a digital Air Force. That's where we're going, digital transformation. Because what we're trying to do now is harness data to make decisions faster. Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, because speed wins. So what you see, and when you bring up uh, drones, is that we're trying to tie every sensor, like a drone, like a satellite, like a Navy ship, like a soldier, tying all those sensors together to make some sense out of that data so that we can bring it to an effect, uh, whether that be an Air Force effect or a Navy or an Army effect. So tying sensors to shooters 24-7 accelerating our decision advantage, that's where your Air Force is going. Admiral Howard, I'll, I'll, I'll end with you. You're on the board of IBM, for, for those who don't know. Using your military experience, how are you helping that company plan for the future? So the Navy is a global Navy, and uh, we do our best work for deployed, uh, protecting national interest and, and people. Um, we get a strong sense of the geopolitical landscape. Uh, wherever we go. And then IBM is just a different shade of blue and is also a global company and needs a strong sense of the geopolitical landscape. Uh, there is nothing we can do today. The General Van Oost talked about how connected we are. There's nothing we can do today that doesn't have ripple effects across the globe.